Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're going to be talking about 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. We are going to find the 30, 60, 90 relationship by finding the altitude of an equilateral triangle. So we know that an equilateral triangle has three congruent sides. So on this triangle, all three sides are 2x. And we also know that all the angles of an equilateral triangle are 60 degrees. Now here, I have labeled each of these as 30 degrees. That's because when we draw in the altitude, we know that it bisects the angle. So it cuts 60 in half, leaving us with two 30 degree pieces. And it's also the perpendicular bisector of our base. So that means it cuts it into two equal pieces. And since we have a length of 2x, each of those pieces now has a length of x. Using Pythagorean theorem, we can find our altitude A by focusing on just one half of our equilateral triangle. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, C squared is our hypotenuse, so that's across from the right angle. So across from our right angle is 2x. Our altitude will be my A squared, and then my B squared will be x squared. So I have a squared plus x squared equals 2x in parentheses squared. I know 2x in parentheses squared is the same thing as 4x squared. So a squared plus x squared equals 4x squared. I need to subtract 1x squared from both sides. So I have a squared equals 3x squared. So I need to get a by itself, so I need to take the square root of both sides. And then I'm left with this, the square root of 3x squared. So what I'm going to do is create a factor tree starting with 3x squared. So two factors of 3x squared are 3 and x squared. And then 3 is prime, so we leave it alone. And then two factors of x squared are x and x. So here we've gone as far as we can. So I see I have one married couple. That's the x's. So they move out of the house, and the 3 stays on the inside. So I have x square roots of 3. And so then my final answer for my altitude is x square root of 3. Now let's just talk about the right triangle we were focusing on, on one half of the equilateral triangle. So we know from what we know about triangles that the smallest angle is going to be across from the smallest side. So the 30 degree angle is going to be across from the short leg. The 60 degree angle is going to be across the long leg, and the 90 degree angle is going to be across from the hypotenuse. And we know that the hypotenuse is always the longest side. On the previous screen, we found that the length across from 30 was x, the length across from 60 was x square roots of 3, and the length across from 90 was 2x. This is a pattern that you can use for any 30, 60, 90 triangle. So anytime you see a 30, 60, 90 triangle, across from the 30 will be side x, across from the 60 will be side x root 3, and across the 90 will be side 2x. Your 30 degree angle will be your most important angle because it is opposite the side x, and the side x is used to find your other leg and your hypotenuse. So on every triangle, the first thing you should do is find your 30 degree angle. Let's look at our first example. So here we have a triangle. I see that I have a right angle and a 60 degree angle, so that means this angle must be my 30 degree angle. Anytime I find my 30 degree angle, I always circle it and then draw an arrow to the opposite side because I know that side is my x, my hypotenuse is 2x, and my leftover side is x square roots of 3. So I have this pattern. Here I see that m is equal to x, so on this side, I could also write 2m, and on this side, I could also write m square roots of 3, because anytime I see x, I can replace it with m. Now, when trying to solve these triangles, we always start with the side that we know. In this case, that side is 9. So I'm going to start with 9 equals m square roots of 3. So 9 equals m square roots of 3. I want to get m by itself, so I'm going to divide by the square root of 3. So m equals 9 over the square root of 3. If you remember from class, we are not allowed to have a square root on the bottom of a fraction, so we have to rationalize it. That means we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So then I'm top, I'll have 9 times the square root of 3. They can't mix because 1 is inside the house and 1 is outside the house. 
So when we multiply fractions, we multiply across. So on top, we'll have 9 times the square root of 3, and it'll stay that way because we can't mix inside and outside the radical. On the bottom, we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And then since 9 and 3 are both outside the radical, we can simplify that. So 9 over 3 is 3. So your final answer for m is 3 square roots of 3. Now to find n, we know that that's 2x or 2m since m and x are equal to each other. So n equals 2m. I've just found that m is equal to 3 square roots of 3, so I can plug that in. So n equals 2 times the square root of 3. Since 2 and 3 are both outside the radical, they can multiply. So my final answer is n equals 6 square roots of 3. Now let's try this example. So I see I have a right angle and a 60 degree angle, so that means my last angle is my 30 degree angle. We know the 30 degree angle is the most important, so I'm going to circle it, draw an arrow. That side is my x, my hypotenuse is 2x, and my leftover side is x square roots of 3. If we can see here, x and c are going to be equal to each other, so I could also rewrite this side as 2c and re rewrite this side as c square roots of 3. So whenever you solve one of these triangles, you always start with the side that you know. In this case, it's our hypotenuse, 8 square roots of 5. I know that it's equal to 2c. So 8 root 5 equals 2c. I need to get c all by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And since 8 and 2 are both outside the radical, I know I can simplify that. So c is equal to 4 square roots of 5. Now I know that d is equal to x root 3, which is the same thing as c root 3, since x and c are the same. So d equals c square roots of 3. I've just found that c is equal to 4 square roots of 5, so I can plug that in. So d equals 4 square roots of 5 times the square root of 3. Now the square root of 5 and the square root of 3 are both inside the radical, so that means they multiply. So I find that d is equal to 4 square roots of 15. And then, of course, we have to check if we can simplify square root of 15. Well, 15 becomes 5 and 3, so no one would get married to move out of the house. So your final answer is d equals 4 square roots of 15. Now try these three examples on your own. We're going to check them in class. Make sure on each problem you find your 30, circle it, Draw your arrow and list your pattern signs, x, 2x, and x square roots of 3. And then solve for the letters they asked you for. That is everything I have for you tonight. I am Grumpy Cat, and this is my happy face.